Hey, look, there's an audible over there. Whoa, are they rare? I hear it only appears once every other month. Oh man, it ran away. It's okay, we can just go to audible.com slash domix or text domix to 500, 500 and get a 30 day trial with a free audiobook and two Audible originals. Hmm, I still wanted to catch the Audible. <clears throat> I've been playing too much Pokemon Go lately. Yeah, I see that there's this revival of Minecraft, and everyone's back to playing Minecraft while I'm playing Pokemon Go at 1 in the morning on a weekday because I know normal people are in bed by that time and can't defend their gyms. For those of you unfamiliar with Pokemon Go, which is probably not a lot of you because it was huge a couple of years ago, and I'd say it's still pretty big now, but not as intense as it was when it first came out. In its initial release, I'm gonna be honest, I thought it was pretty lame. It didn't seem like there was much to do. And I know a lot of you agree because you probably played it for a few weeks or a few months with your crazy mystic pride, and then you dropped it within a year. But it was understandable. They only had the original 150 Pokemon at first. I heard gym battles were pretty unbalanced, and they didn't even have raids until like a year later. I never bothered with it. Plus, I didn't have a good data plan, and I wasn't about to upgrade just to play a game I wasn't interested in. Well, now I'm on that unlimited. So a couple of weeks ago, I decided to try it out for the first time. I figured it would get me out of the house more and make the best of the weather before winter comes, which in Canada, if you didn't know, starts in October. So I downloaded it and was instantly hooked. I've been going outside every day, exploring nearby neighborhoods. I've discovered parts of my city I didn't know existed because I never had a reason to go to those areas. It's even brought me back to areas of my childhood. Look, that's where I took swimming lessons and where that kid taught me the Pokemon glitch. <laughs> I understand what I am. I am a gamer at heart. I don't like going out for runs just because it'll make me healthier. But if it means being able to hatch these eggs for rare Pokemon, then hallelujah, yeah, I'm down. I don't know, I just find it difficult to do things or go to places unless there's a real purpose or unless it's a game. Hey, you wanna go for a walk and get some air? Mmm, nah, I'm good. Kinda tired and I'll just be a buffet for the mosquitoes. I'll pass. Is it the one by the library or the clock tower? Did you just say library? Clock tower! Alright, let's go, go, go! It's library. I told my friends that I started playing and was pleased to find out that nearly everyone has played before. So I convinced everyone to start playing again. And Pogo is definitely more fun when you roll out with a squad. It's actually kind of scary sometimes. I stopped by a park one time on the way home just to roll the gym and there was a Raikou raid happening. A legendary Pokemon. Obviously, I couldn't solo it, but I thought, hmm, I wonder if I wait just a bit, maybe so. And just then, two SUVs pull into the lot, each full of people. Adults, mind you. You think Pokemon Go is a kid's game? Nope. I see people close to my age range playing this game way more than children, okay? Kids are casuals because they have curfews and don't have their driver's license. So this squad parks beside me, surrounds me actually, because you can't reach the gym otherwise. And they're obviously not here to play on the swings or play hopscotch. Okay, but they're definitely here to raid too. I checked the raid status and there's like 9 people in the queue, so I hop my level 25 ass in there with them. All instinct, all level 40. My attacks only tickled at best and I got carried hard. But it's all good. I still got that Raikou. Thanks, bye! Playing late at night did lead to some scary moments. Claire and I went to claim a nearby gym one night to collect some coins. When you defeat a rival gym, you can then hold that gym with your own Pokemon. And for every 10 minutes that they defend that location, you earn one coin. For a maximum of 50 a day, which equals to about 50 cents. Which is enough to afford nothing in the shop, so you can see why we're out at night like vultures trying to secure our spots. Mm, sure, I have a job and I can just use real money to buy in-game coins and pay to win, but for the competition of being able to deny those free 50 coins from other players, I gotta play that game, I'm sorry, I gotta play. 
Anyway, we just finished beating the gym and we're about to put our tanky boys in when all of a sudden, two cars pull into the lot. Not the same ones from earlier. And my dumbass first thought was, oh sh- I hope they're not here to take our gym. You're probably playing too much Pokemon Go if you're hoping people who go to the park at night are there to deal drugs and not to deny you your opportunity to earn in-game currency. I mean, I, I guess drug dealers can play Pokemon Go too. But no, they were definitely not here to play Pokemon Go. They step out of their cars and walk towards each other and start talking. I can't make out what they're saying, but one guy had a flashlight and he was pointing it rather aggressively towards my car as if we weren't part of the agreement of their meeting or something. Hey, who's this, huh? I thought I told you to come alone. No, 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 they're not with me. Is my assumption of their conversation. And after a few minutes of this, they both get into one of the cars and drive out of the lot, leaving the other car behind. My first instinctual thought, there's a dead body in there, let's get the f*** out of here. So we also pull out of the lot and drive off. But as we're leaving the park, I realize that they didn't entirely leave and were just idling down the road. I drive the other way, and they start following us. Alright, well now I can't head straight home or else they'll know where we live and murder us for being witnesses, so I'm just gonna drive aimlessly in whatever direction and maybe they'll leave us alone. They eventually turn at an intersection and stop following us. Wow, that, that was kind of freaky. So how's our tanky boys doing? And for the next couple of days, the car that they left behind was still there. What I found out, and I don't know if this is true, but apparently your car won't get towed if there's no license plate on it, which the car didn't have. My assumption is that whoever's car it was was probably visiting their friend and had nowhere to park, so they thought this loophole could work. I don't know if they got ticketed, but they definitely didn't get towed because that car was there for at least a week. I don't know how long Pokemon Go is gonna be hype for me, but I do really want to make my board game cafe become a Pokestop. And sadly, it seems like nominations are unavailable for my area, but if anyone has any hookups, yeah, let me know. Well, would you look at the time? It's Vulture O'Clock, and that gym looks pretty decayed. Alright, see ya! If you have long commutes to work and school, or if you're on one of your Pokemon Go walks, Audible is a great way to keep you company. With the Audible app, you can enjoy your audiobooks wherever and whenever you please. They're yours to keep for life, and you're able to re-listen to them even if you cancel your membership. As a member, you'll receive three credits every month, which you can spend on one audiobook and two Audible originals, regardless of the price. Some audiobooks I recommend are Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell, Failure is an Option by H. John Benjamin, or How About Getting into the Halloween Season with The Conception of Terror, Tales by M.R. James. Once again, that's audible.com slash domix or text domix to 500-500 for a 30-day trial and credits to an audiobook and to Audible Originals. Enjoy, and see some of y'all soon for the Scribble Showdown Tour. <laughs>